All right, welcome back to the Preston View. We are going to talk all things Will Keane. We're going to look at that Bristol City, Bristol City second half. Uh, we're going to talk about Ramsey being recalled, and we're also going to talk about Osmojevic as well. Um, lots to talk about, and of course, we're going to do that all with Preston fan Joey. Good evening, Joey. How are you? Yeah, good evening. I'm not too bad. Finally got a free point, so it's, it's always good to come on the podcast after that. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll have a quick chat about uh, the Christmas games as well and what your view of all those have been and ask for, you, for your December player of the month as well at the end. So stay watching for that. Let's kick off then uh, with the Bristol City game. Booed off at half-time by, by some fans, um, but then came out second half and it's a different team, wasn't it? Energy. Drive. Um, do you think he kind of said at this half time, look, Bristol City are never going to score and we might as well have a go here? I, I, I think, I mean, I think Bristol City, well, to be fair, they were first half, they were by far the better team. I thought they, thought they looked comfortable and we just didn't, we actually set up like the away team um, and we played like the away team. We didn't really offer any threat going forward. I think, to be honest with you, I've been his biggest critic, but Freddie Woodman was probably our man of match in the first half. I think he kept us in it with a few decent saves. Um, I think basically at half time he realized that it was now or never and he knew he had to do something because I think he really felt the pressure that if they it looked like that Bristol was going to win this game and he, had he not made those changes, we end up losing, then he, he's probably on borrowed time. Uh, so he, he knew he had to make some positive changes, go more attacking and just hope those changes made a difference. And, and thankfully they did. And luckily for him, they did. But um, they were the same changes that I was wanting to see at Chef Wednesday at home a few weeks back when we were 1-0 down at home to near the bottom of the league. And I said at the time, uh, Liam Miller, we're getting double, sometimes tripled up on. Yeah. And what we needed was to go two up front just to sort of alleviate that pressure for him because you know, the defenders could have some different to think about. Um, he didn't. And we didn't make any subs and think until the 60-odd minute. And we ended up losing that game. So I, I'm just thinking, like, had we had done what we did on the weekend, which appeared to probably most fans the the obvious thing to do, and you know he got a lot of criticism for his selection in the first place for not going out attack at home to a team who were also mid table. Um, so he got criticism for that, but then you've got to say, well, fair, fair dues to him for actually realizing this at half time, making those changes, and and uh, yeah, we did look a completely different uh, side in the second half. We we went home from the first minute in the second half, and they really struggled. I don't think. They expected that from us. I think they probably thought, you know, all we need to do is just, you know, keep doing what we're doing and eventually we'll score. And uh, I think they they got sort of caught out by the fact that we actually tried to attack, which we didn't do once in the first half. <laughs> um, one of the changes he made um, was Osmovic. Um Do you think North End were, were badly advised to pay £2.15 million um, for him? I'm not sure. I mean, he's he's shown signs at times uh, of being like a, you know, a, a decent all round player. Uh, other times he does go missing, and I think you've got so like in the first half. In fairness to him, he didn't get much service. But when he when he does, you know, I don't I don't think he's got like the greatest touch, and he doesn't also do what sort of Keane and Reese did when they came on, which was sort of try and find, you know, you know what what sort of Harry Kane does as well. You know, he tries to. When when the team's playing poorly, he drops deep and you know tries to find the, almost the, the play himself and you know harass those defenders and try and make something from nothing. He's not got that ability. He does need it sort of on the plate for him. Um, you know what we're saying is he, he is a good finisher, um, but he does need those chances presenting to him. And if, we, if we're playing like we did first off um, on Saturday, he's not going to get those chances, and he's not the sort of player for those games. Um, He's definitely different to what we have. So, you know, um, but is he any better than what we have? I'm not sure. I think Will Keane, I think, showed on Saturday that he probably is the better striker. And I think from now on, I think he'll start playing. I mean, he he was, uh, I mean, he was a top scorer at the start of the season. He got injured, got dropped uh, when he came back because he didn't really have the same form. But I think I saw signs on Saturday of his sort of old self where he's like looking for the ball, dropping deep, you know, trying to, collect the ball, trying to, you know, spread the ball across. He's not, he's not just like a, a typical strike, which I feel as Mike is, which is very limited to, you know, just being able to put the ball in the back of that. He does, he is more of an all-rounder. He does do uh, work on the wing and everything. So um, a player like us, Mike, he feels like a premium to a team like Preston. And we need, we need players who, you know, are fighting everywhere around the pitch. And I don't think he is that. I think he would work well in a, 
at Leeds or someone like that. Yeah. You know, he, he'd be able, you know, because he, he does cause defenses havoc sometimes. Uh, but I just think he's a bit of a luxury in our team. And, and like you said, two million. Well, it was, I think, it was two point, yeah, whatever million was, which is, I think he broke our record. You know, we, we a player like that needs to make a huge impact. He, he doesn't need to just be a player who is a luxury as such, like he is at the minute. Yeah. He's not a lone striker, is he? Do you, do you agree? Or? And I think that's one of his issues because I think Lowe sees him as that and he isn't. You, you're quite right. And I think that's been part of his problem is that when he does play, he does normally play on top of his own. And when he does play alongside someone, he, I, you do see a different player, I think. So I, I I do feel a bit sorry for him and I don't think we, should, we could be totally blaming him because I think, he, you know, he has been working with very limited resources up there. And uh, like I say, I think when he does play alongside someone, you know, I'd be interested to see him alongside Reese at some point. Yeah. Um, you know, someone who, who does do that bit of more work and stuff, or even Keane himself. I think we, we've we've rarely seen that. And um, and that's quite frustrating for the fans, like I say, because especially at home, you, you want to see, see you going attacking and stuff. And if, 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 if all you're doing is lumping up to your big striker, you know, that feels very, you know, 20th century football. It doesn't feel <laughs> like the way we should do it doing it in the modern day. So, yeah, I, th- I think... Um, I, I think we should still give him another chance. You know, he, I think he, he almost probably a victim of his own success when he came. Because I mean, when a player like that comes from a foreign league, they don't always hit the ground running. And he, he sort of actually did quite well at, right at the start. And I think from that, you know, he's almost like having to live up to that. Um, and he's probably been overplayed as well, as as quite a lot of players to prefer in this team, like Brad Potts and stuff, who, you know, we always knew that we'd need to... Um, actually have that backup for him because he's not going to be able to last a full season doing 90 minutes every game. Um, we'll talk about Leeds in a second. Let's um, let's talk about um, ins and outs then. So Ramsey um, has been recalled by Liverpool. What's your take on that? Yeah, well, I think it's disappointing because I feel like there's a player in him. Um, I'm not seeing it myself like, but obviously he, he's come from good pedigree, you know, when he was playing at Aberdeen. Um, you know, they highly rated him enough for Liverpool to pay it was like seven or eight million or something for him and um and he was going to be you know a good at back up to trent uh in their team you know they they didn't have him just to be a, a reserve player they had him for when you know like trent is injured at the minute um they had him to be second choice and uh for a club like liverpool that's quite a, a big feat um and you know he came in uh when he f- first the interview said that you know the reason i joined is you know i wanted to do the attacking stuff you know I chip him with assists, chip him with goals. And then Ryan Law comes out a few weeks ago and says, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I, 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 the, the reason I'm not picking Ramsey is because we, we want an attacking full wing back. And it's like, well, surely that's him. I mean, he's, right there, yeah. he, he, he's explained himself that's what he adds to the team. Liverpool have signed him and Liverpool don't sign defensive <laughs> fullbacks. I mean, you can you can see with Trent. Uh, so the fact we didn't get to see him and the fact that he just like ghost him completely out of the squad you know, players like Robbie Brady, who's had a difficult time at Preston. Yeah, so I think like uh, Ramsey himself, um, I think will be disappointed by by his lack of appearances. And as I say, we didn't really have any sort of excuse because we were playing poorly. I mean, up until last week at four wins in 20. So you think, you know, you've got a Premier League player in your reserves. You think we'd at least try to utilise him. And if not, to just at least, you know, just have a backup for report so he's not playing 90 minutes. And now, Unfortunately, Potts come off injured and I don't know how serious that injury is, but it could end up being that we end up from two ring, right wing backs to zero and uh, which is just a case, it's just a classic Preston thing and I think what will happen is square pegs in round doors will play uh, Alan Brown that right wing back and it's just going to be disastrous against Leeds as well. <laughs> it's gonna be, and that's what I'm not looking forward to. So yeah. hopefully Potts is, well, Potts is fit on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, switching it to four four two as he did and went all yeah. all attacking. He, he's not going to start that same system, is he? At Ellen Road, no. um, absolutely. Not. Well, he'd be foolhardy if 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 he did. Um, but Leeds was a team that you should beat, albeit with ten men back on back on Boxing Day. So it's not a foregone conclusion. This game is it. I, I think it is. <laughs> I, I, I think they'll they'll be wanting revenge. Um, and I I also think. I think we caught them on off there, to be honest with you, day after Christmas. And um, we we actually, we did a job on them, I think, to be fair. And, and again, I think I thought after the game, I was like, oh, Ryan Law's learning something here. And, you know, we've managed to play to our strengths. And, uh, 
But then the next game we played Chef Wednesday and it was sort of, like I said before, he didn't make those decisions when he needed to. Um, and we've just, again, we're again where I've credited low and I don't do this often, but uh, Bristol City, you know, the second half. And I'm thinking, oh, is this again another turning point? But I think Leeds will just be that one step too far. And I think, like I say, them at home, I think it's a different kettle of fish. And uh, I think we'll, we'll, we will struggle, especially if, like I say, if Potts isn't playing and we have to play Brown out right wing back. Um, but yeah, um, I think one thing we've got though is uh, Will Keane on form. And I think we'll get chances. And it's just what we are good at actually being, we're very clinical this year. One thing we are, which is uh, unusual, is clinical. And I think, you know, Leeds will give us chances because they, they have that in them. That they do, yeah. Even though they're really good attacking, they can, they can just make those odd mistakes, lapse of, lapse of concentration, whether we can capitalise on it. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm not too hopeful as I, well, as mind you, I wasn't on Boxing Day before the game. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're very much a first half team as well, especially at home. They'll yeah. might obliterate you for 45 minutes if you can hang on in there. Yeah, that's keep it. Keep it tight to you. And uh, I don't think Liam Miller's going to get um, as much space as he got um, on Boxing Day for that, especially for that second. No, definitely not. I think they'll have done the homework now on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Who's your, uh, who's your player of the month for December then? Um... I think it have to be Liam Miller, to be honest with you. I think just, um, I mean, it wasn't just the Leeds game. I think, um, I mean, even the Chef Wednesday, even though we were very poor, he should have probably scored there. He hit the crossbar. And the game before that, he came off the bench against Swansea, scored another great goal. I think he was just like, he was like the bright spark in, I think, a very poor team in, the, in December. And I think um, he was what everyone was talking about, you know, other clubs were talking about. And he actually made us like, you know, feel a bit special that we've we've actually got something decent in our squad for once, a bit of quality, and uh, yeah, and, and he's he 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 sort of came. I think you know, start of season he was uh, just settling in. I think he was a bit overused by Low, and then was again the victim of his own success, where then Low dropped him because he was so overused that he ended up looking tired and stuff. Uh, but I think now he's 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 got settled in. He's got his fitness, and I think he's 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 firing on all cylinders. So yeah, I think Liam Miller definitely for December. Great, right, cheers for that. And just finally, how was your trip to Stamford Bridge? Yeah, it was a good day out. <laughs> Result not so good, but a uh, good yeah. day out. Yeah. Um, and it was good to see, you know, 6,000 and our yeah, yeah. fans there in, in the capital. And, you know, there, were, there was even a party at the end, you know, so it was... I saw the videos been, of that on social yeah, media. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we only seem to party when we lose 4-0 away because we did exactly the same <laughs> last year when we played Middlesbrough. So, I don't, uh, <laughs> so hopefully... I mean, hopefully we're partying at Ellen Road on Saturday, uh, Sunday, yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah, um, yeah. it's not because we've lost 4-0. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cheers, Joey. We'll catch you next week. Thanks, Thank Thanks, you. Man. Cheers, man. Thanks.